I mean just just the the indwelling of the Almighty, a place where we don't have to invite him here because he's already here. We don't have to hope that he shows up because he's already among us. He's within us. He's all around us, and he inhabits the praises of his people. So we want to engage together today and make sure that we create a habitation of the Most High. He's already here, but we want the dwelling place of God. The dwelling place saying, this is, we want this to be a place where he says, I want, I want to reside there. Not because it says kingdom culture on the sign, but because of who we are as sons and daughters that he wants to be with us. Not after you get it all figured out. If you're waiting to get it all figured out, that's you know, good luck, all right? It's not gonna be after you get it all figured out that he says, okay, now I can come and now I can come and set with them. No, listen, well done, good and faithful. That's not just something you can hear at the end of your life. What did he say of Jesus after being baptized? He said, he said this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, the, uh, even a greater translation of that, uh, that I, this is my son and in him is my highest delight. In him is my high. There was not a miracle that had happened yet. There's not, this wasn't after Jesus's earthly ministry and he raised the dead and he done all this, he done all this amazing stuff. Before, before you're healing the sick, before you're releasing the sermon on the mount, before you're going to the cross, before you're doing any of that, just because of who you are, this is my son and I'm well pleased with him. That was the words Jesus heard. So today, you don't have to do anything today to get on God's good side. He has no bad sides. Engage with him. He wants to engage with you. Now, if you're hearing that like, well, I can just do whatever I want. No, no, no. That, that just means your, your ear hasn't matured yet. It doesn't give you the license to do whatever you want. It gives you the grace to have a greater degree of freedom than what you've ever experienced. There's coming a day of freedom that will make yesterday's freedom look like captivity. And we're inviting you into a greater measure of everything that he's dreamt for you, a greater measure of everything that he has for you. So I just invite you just, if you got, whatever you got going on, I'm not saying that you didn't have a crazy week. I'm not saying you didn't have a crazy schedule. I'm saying right now to shift all of your focus to him. This is a place where our hearts are bent to him. This is a place where he comes in and he begins to transform. It doesn't mean we didn't have something going on. It means beyond anything that we had going on. I bend, I bend my my mind back to you where it originally belonged, where it originally belonged. So let's agree together for that to happen today. Wherever he shows up, his world comes with him. So since he's already here, there's nothing impossible in the room. Everything becomes possible for the ones that believe and we believe. So these signs will follow. These signs will follow because we believe. So together in belief, we're gonna worship and engage with him because he's an engaging father. He's not a father that is separated from you. He's a father that's wanting you to be so near to him, so near to him. He's not, he, it's not like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't care what you got going on. No, 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 but despite everything you got going on, I want you to be right here with me and he wants you to engage with him. So today together, we're gonna do that, all right? Father, I thank you, God, for this amazing company of people. God, I thank you, God, for trusting us with them. I thank you, Lord, for bringing them here today on purpose for such a time as this. God, you knew exactly what was going to happen today, even before we did. God, even before we did. Lord, we had plans, but Lord, even today, you've directed our steps, God. And we just thank you, Lord, because you're already here. I thank you for the miracles that are gonna happen, God. I thank you for the miracles, God, if somebody needs healing, that can happen even now, even now, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the transformations of thought, God, that are gonna happen, perspectives that are gonna be elevated, God, for 
for the transformations in heart posture, God, today, God, as we are as we are burning for you one degree greater, God, as we're pursuing you one degree more, God, everything, God, everything, God, that you have dreamt for this house and this company today, we say yes to it, God, today. We come in agreement with it today, God. Whatever you wanted us to have today, that's what we say yes to inheriting, God. And we, God, we, God, we desire you. We desire you, God. We desire you, God. We're not here just to feel you, God. We're here to walk with you. We are here to feel you. We're here to talk with you, God. We're here to engage with you, God, in the intimate degree that you want us to. So, Father God, we say, Lord, thank you for the open heaven that is in the room, God, and a heart of the people, God, to go after you, and a heart of the people that says, God, I'm not I'm not here just to check a box that said Sunday morning. I'm not here just to check a box that said Christianity. I am here, God, to speak the language of sonship, God. I am here, God, to engage with an Abba that's so, that is so fascinated with his creation, God. We thank you, Lord, for your heart towards us. Now, Lord, out of that perfect love towards us, out of love's perfection towards us, we shift it back to you that we love you because you first, we, you first loved us and it empowered us, God, to engage with our Creator. So we thank you, God, for being in the room. Whatever you dream today, we say yes. We say yes, Father. Amen. Let's engage together.
There is healing in your throne. You invite us to sit at your feet. Your love is an ocean, so wide and so deep. 
Cause now I know what I 
in the house of the Lord, cause I dwell, I dwell, I dwell in your atmosphere, yeah, cause I dwell, I dwell, I dwell.
Abba, Abba, we belong to you. We belong to you. Father, we belong to you. We belong to you, Abba. Thank you. Thank you for the sweetness of your face among us today. May your words be like honey on our lips. Lord, as your tender affection towards us continues to peel back the calluses off of hearts. So I thank you, God, for quickening a people today. Lord, some that, Lord, are a are seeing, Lord, what that you're speaking to them and hearing what they're speaking, God, that they just with absolute, with absolute surety, they just say, Father, I'm, I'm obeying you. I'm stepping where you tell me to step. I'm shifting where you tell me to shift. God, I thank you for, I thank you for just increasing our perspective of you. I thank you, yes, Lord, I, th I thank you for the, for the magnetism of your goodness that is in this room. Lord, that you, you are so good to us. You are so good to us. And I thank you for the, for the magnetism of your goodness in this room. I thank you for transformed lives. Transform lives. God, we give you glory for it. We give you glory for it. Lord, we just honor you today. All of your words are certainly yes and amen. Lord, that we don't have to We don't have to waver. 
wondering, wavering in our wandering ways if this or that's going to be accomplished, Lord. Let us be so in partnership, in union with what that you've spoken and released over our life. I thank you, Father, for it. (laughs) I thank you for it. God, seamless union, unending union, fully in you and you fully in us. Lord, that's the partnership. That's the partnership. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Man. I'm just going to wait on him just a minute. The Lord's wanting to just shift a couple things in the room. And I, I, this is, I kept hearing this really weird word that I don't ever use. I'm pretty sure it's for the country folk. But I just kept feeling the Holy Spirit and He just kept speaking this up. <laughs> and He just kept giving me this word, cahoots. Yeah, I know. It's, and I was like, okay, I had to look it up because I was pretty sure I knew what it meant. But I was like, you know what? You may be going down a different road. I don't know. And I just hearing the word cahoots, which is almost used exclusively in the phrase in cahoots, which means an alliance or partnership. But it's also often referenced to people that are up to no good. And I don't know why, but I felt Holy Spirit just dropping this. And I assure you, I don't know the last time I used the word cahoots, but I felt him speaking that. And I just felt like that there is just a a divine transition for somebody that maybe have linked up in partnership with something that you shouldn't have been in partnership with. And the Lord is saying, hey, you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about what you've been in cahoots with in the past. And I don't know, maybe somebody divine like, if he says this top, I, maybe somebody's in that room or watching online seven years from now, I have no idea. And says, if he uses the word cahoots, I know God's speaking to me because that is not a common language. So, so I'm just speaking this, I'm just speaking this now. Whatever that you've been in cahoots with that was up to no good, the Lord is inviting you to a different degree of cahoots with him saying partnership with me and life union with me and let me, let me, resolve the error of your ways. You have no idea how strong my resolve is. God, I hear God saying that. You have no idea how strong my resolve is. Where you've messed up and where you have erred, you don't have to live forever in the mistakes of yesteryear, but you're coming in alliance and union with me and my resolve is resolute. 
My resolve is resolute and it is forever. Let me, let me do what I do in your life. Surrender it all to me. Don't worry about what you previously got tied to. Surrender it all to me. Surrender it all to me and watch what my resolve will do in your life. I speak that over you. I speak that over an individual in this room or multiple people. Lord, previously what we were tied to and we were up to no good. But Lord, today, today, no good, no good, no good son entangles himself in civilian affairs. We are not entangled. We are not entangled in things that are lesser anymore. Lord, I thank you for freedom from the entanglements of what the enemy wants us to be distracted with and we come into union with you. It doesn't mean, Father, that we don't go into the marketplace. It means that we're not driven by the marketplace. We're driven by the kingdom. We're, we're in union with the kingdom, and we walk in union with the kingdom into the marketplace, into the career arena, into wherever that we go and whatever that we're assigned to and whatever the schedule may say. We, don't, we aren't dictated by schedules and calendars, God, but we, Lord, we, Lord, as a governing company of people in union with you, God. We will accomplish the schedule, but we will do it in the kingdom. We will do it in the kingdom. So Father, I thank you for a superior partnership. I thank you, God, for a superior degree of cahoots, so to speak, God. A superior degree of cahoots with you, Father, that, that, that you, God, that you in union with you, God, are accomplishing in our area, in our family, in our marriage, God, in our business, God, in all that we, in all the, in all the endeavors that are before us, God, that we are not distracted by the natural things, but we're fixed on the super supernatural and what that you have laid before us in our life. Thank you for stirring our hearts to greater degrees, greater degrees of capacity for you. Thank you for stirring our hearts, God, for a greater degree of intimacy with you. God, just to be with you. Why does it have to be about all these other things, Father? Just being with you. Just being with you. We thank you, God, because you are here and we get to just be with you. We get to hang out with Abba. We get to hang out with Abba. Lord, we, got, we have got to break the mindset that there's anything better to hang out with. God, we get to hang out with Abba as if walking any other way would be the way we would want to walk. We hang out with you. I thank you, Lord, for, for breaking off inferior mindsets inferior logics. We welcome the superior reality of the mind of Christ. Heavenly reality. We thank you for it in this place. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team, for, for just flowing flowing and might be different for you today. That's all right. We're going to, we're going to, Robin's going to teach to us today, preach to us today, prophesy to us today, whatever the Lord is, is stirring there. Um, did not know we were going this way until this morning. And uh, the Lord was just stirring something in Robin uh, for several months, actually, and I don't want to say it came into completion this morning because I think that would be an error to say it that way. But it came into further perspective, would be 100% accurate this morning for him of some things that Yahweh has been downloading in him. And, and he called me this morning. He was telling me about it. He didn't ask me to, to, to teach or preach today. And, and then I started thinking about it further. And I, and I called him back and I said, hey, Maybe, maybe you're supposed to do this this morning. 
instead of me sharing something that, you know, maybe this is what we're supposed to hear. And so um, he agreed to it. And, and so we are going to have Mr. Robin Beach to speak to us today. And I want you to know that there's, I know, I do know a lot of people and I know a lot of great, great people. I know, I personally know several great people of God. And uh, as far as people that I personally know, I'm not sure if I personally know somebody that has a greater teaching a greater teaching, and it's not just a, a singular gifting, because I, I, I hate to sum it up like that, but uh, as, as Robin Beach, uh, at, when he just begins to, to flow, I mean, he's a, he's a professor of theology and, 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 different, and different things, and, and I, just a phenomenal, a phenomenal teacher. Um, now, I don't want to define somebody by their gift, because that's incorrect. And, and a lot of times we, we struggle in these particular arenas because we're still trying to figure out what, what are, we? are we? Are we an apostle? Are we a prophet? Are we a teacher? Are we a pastor? Are we an evangelist? Are some of you like, why well, in any of those things? And, and because you, you may not be defined by all of those because to some he gave to be apostles and to some he gave to be prophets, but you can certainly flow in and out of those gifts on demand at any different point. Just as Jesus now is, so are we in this earth. So if you can show me the thing that Jesus lacked, then I'll show you what you also lack in. But if you cannot find anything of lack in Jesus, then you need to quit living with a thinking that says, I have anything of lacking in me. If there's anything lacking in me, it's the indicator It's the indicator that there's still a greater measure of fullness, a greater measure of fullness that needs to happen in my life because I am supposed to be as Jesus now is, as he now is. That's that's 1 John 4, 4, 19, is it 19? 4, 19, as he now is, so are we in this world. 18, as he now is, so are we in this world. So there's nothing that's lacking. Whatever's lacking in God now also is lacking in you. But since there's nothing lacking in him, then there must be nothing lacking in you. We just got to get better at accessing what's already in us. What's already in us. So um, I don't want to define people by their gifts. That's that's this long introduction here. Uh, one, not, not define them by their gifts, but uh, as far as people I personally know, one of the greatest one of the greatest teachers that I have personal relationship with is Robin Beach, and I want to invite him to come up here, and he's going to release some things that God stirred in his heart. It's, a, it's an honor to be here today with you. I consider this home for me. I consider this a, a base camp, if you will. I go a lot of different directions. But as we're sitting here singing, I, when Josh started out, he quoted 1 John 4, 19. It says, we love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. See, in the, book, in the book of Revelation, there's a point there where J- Jesus is talking to the church of Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, Pat. And he says, tell them to return to the first love. You've left the first love. Now, in our thinking, and this is, a, this is easy, to, easy to do, one of the things that we've always done, Teresa, is when we think about that first love, we think, well, I need to get back to loving Jesus again. I need to get back to where I 
love that that first that very first thing when I first felt his presence invade my heart. But that's not the love that he's talking about there. See, what happens so often is we fall off this little precipice that exists right in that very spot, sissy. And what we end up doing is we fall off the precipice of grace and we fall back into the idea of our own works. Because the first love that he's talking about we got to get back to there is understanding the love that he has for us. Because everything that I am is rooted, seated in the love that he has for me. It begins there. Origin is everything. Causality of faith is everything. We've always had this idea that faith was something that was birthed in us by our intention and by our own invention. But faith was the very thing that framed the worlds, Angela, from the beginning. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. So when we talk about the faith of God, in Mark chapter 11, verses 21 through 24, Jesus curses a fig tree. The disciples are in wonderment that there's no fruit on that tree now. And Jesus immediately recognizes the opportunity of the moment, Sydney, to begin to teach them and release to them a, gi a gift, to begin to give them a gift that was more precious than silver that was more valuable than anything else that they could ever have. And he makes this very brief statement that carries with it the weight of creation. The weight of creation. When he says this, have the faith of God. See, in our own King James language, in the old King James language, it'll say have faith in God. But what it actually says in the written Greek language there is have the faith of God. He's offering them a gift. He's giving them something that they previously did not possess. But what he gives them carries with it the weight of creation. Have the faith of God. The very thing that was in him that allowed him to say, light be and light be. He gives this to them and gives it to you as a gift. This is yours. It doesn't cost you anything. You bear no burden of responsibility in the acceptance of this. It simply is yours. Have this. And then I'm just seeing so prophetically right now. I'm, everything, and then Sydney starts singing this song that we know of as the blessing. The blessing. This comes from Hebrew, Numbers chapter 6. Verses 24 through 20. I can go read the Bible if y'all want me to, but do you trust me that I know what I'm talking about? If You can write these scriptures down and go look them up. I'll go read it if you want me to, but just, it's Numbers chapter six, verse 24 through 26. And Pat, it says this, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Yahweh Barak Shamar. Yahweh or Panim or Hanan. I just spoke Hebrew and I just said the first two lines of the blessing. Now let me tell you what I said. Not what you've seen written, but let me tell you what a Hebraic hearer would have heard in what I just said. Let me give you a picture. Let me give you a gift. Let me give you a gift that means so much that the Father's heart, he pulls it out of his own chest 
And he says, here, I want you to have this. Because he says this, didn't he? Yahweh will kneel before you and present you with the gift of placing the hedge of his love and protection around you. The light of his face will be the light of your face. And this is defined. This is what defines graciousness. Kanan. Which means that he looks at us and says, as he kneels before you, as he kneels before you, Yahweh, as Yahweh kneels before you, Immediately the picture of John chapter 13 flashes through my soul of Jesus taking a basin and a towel and kneeling before the disciples and Peter thrusting his hand out saying, no, you will never do this to me. And Jesus said, if you don't let me do this to you, you have no part with me. See, in our egocentric society, we have become so self-sufficient that we have walked right away from the greatest gift that we could ever have. In the place of, in the place of his graciousness, we have put the inferior idea of our own individuality in that seat of authority. And all he's asking us to do today is unseat that one. He's just simply saying, Tim, will you unseat your ego? Will you unseat your self-reliance? Can you absolutely relinquish? Can you absolutely relinquish, Sidney? your subjectivity, your own thoughts, your own ideas, your own opinions, your own sentiments even, can you lay those aside? Because what I have to offer you is all of those things that I am. All of my thoughts, my sentiments, my opinion. I created you to be the vessels and the containers that are the transporters See, I want to do a movie called Transporter and mine's going to be way different than the other one. Yeah, it'll be good. Transporters of the faith of Abba. Transporters of the heart of Abba. We're talking divine superimposition here. Anybody know what the word superimpose means? Back in the old days of Hollywood, they used to even create scenes. Like, if, I mean, anybody, anybody, everybody's watched The Wizard of Oz, right? Much of those scenes are produced by superimposition. They would take one picture, lay another picture on top of it, and they become melded into one. It's called superimpose, superimposition. And the gift that he has to give us today. See, what we've always done, guys, is we've always, we've created this mindset and this idea of a God who was just right there. And we were right here. And we would take one step toward him, but when we did, he would take another step back. And so we always thought that there was this Idea, even though we might get kind of close, there's still this separation that exists between us. This idea of a line of demarcation. 
no matter how thin the line is. It could be as thin as a razor's edge, but it's still there. And he's wanting to erase that from our mentalities. He's wanting to negate that from our ability to even draw conclusion. He's wanting to so magnanimously negate that, that there's no idea of it any longer within the hearts of his people. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. With, that word with right there in the Greek language is the word pros. Now, what that means is we've heard the terminology face to face, correct? I'm sure that some of you have heard, I bet Pastor Josh, who I so honor this house, by the way. I love Tosh and Joshua, my God. I, lo- I, I just, I have such a deep respect and honor for this house. I mean, you guys are... I'm just honored to be here. Thank you. That's all I can say right now. But pros, face to face, Teresa. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, chapter chapter 1, verse 1. Now what that pros, what face to face means, we always think, Josh, let me use you. I'm going to get close to you. Okay. What we've always thought pros meant, did you eat a breath, Matt? Okay. I'm good. I'm good. Well, he's, a, he's taller than I am, but we always thought pros meant this. I'm not going to kiss you. <laughs> but we always thought that was pros. Okay. But now watch this. This is pros, right? Watch, stand behind me, Josh. Now, yep, right, right directly behind me. No, 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 face me, face okay, me, okay. face me. This is pros. Now, Imagine that I just simply, that my molecules and my atoms just simply reverberate to the, to the speed that I speed up because I'm nothing but light and he's nothing but light. Everybody knows that matter is nothing but solidified light, okay? What if I start vibrating so fast that I'm simply not here and he moves in front and I go like this and that our face is superimposed? That's face to face. It literally means face into face. Face into face. Face into face. In First Peter chapter one, I was, I've been, I, I got so many places that I could go and I wish that I had six weeks to do this. My wife would tell you it would take that long. <laughs> but I want to read First Peter chapter one, verse one. from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To those temporarily residing abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, the province of Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father by being set apart by the Spirit for obedience and for sprinkling with Jesus Christ's blood. May grace and peace 
be yours in full measure. For a long time and for months now, I have had this vortex inside of me. I've had this swirling. And sometimes, Jasper, it almost feels like it's agitating to me. It almost feels like a washing machine. Like that's called an agitator. You know what I mean? It feels like a washing machine inside of me. Because it's so much in my heart cries out, I want to be able to give God's people something that's literally going to change their lives. I don't want to just, look, I teach, I can teach all over the world, all over the globe. And I don't want to just teach this cool lesson. I don't want to just preach this cool message just so that people go, man, wasn't that good? and walk outside the building. And by the time they get to the buffet, they can't even remember the scripture references. I want to give you something that's going to change your life forever. And this is something, and this is just a first piece. This is just a breaking of the bread, if you will. This is just a sipping of the cup. But this is one of those things that if we will begin to set down with it, set down in it, that it carries with it a weight of transformation that can singularly begin to shape and redefine an entire culture. Because it moves us out of the boundary of our own creation. In other words, this is my life. It moves us outside of the boundary of my own building. See, as much as I love the identity message and preach it everywhere, I still see a fatal flaw that I can't help but call out. And the fatal flaw of the identity message is this, is so so many times, and I I, I know how Josh is, so I don't believe this has ever happened here, but too many times I've seen it, the identity message is still released as individualism. My identity in Christ. Who I am in Christ. Now, immediately when I say that, your heart goes, Well, isn't that what it's supposed to be? Watch this. Paul says in Galatians chapter two, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in this flesh I live, and watch this, here's that gift again, by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The life that I now live, I live, yet not I, but Christ. See, Saul, who became Paul, realized that in the leaving behind of Saul, that he was accepting another name and therefore another identity that was outside of himself. And that identity was based in a covenantal union that had an eternal aspect to it. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. The word was God. It was based in the revelation of what we call the perichoretic, perichoresis. I don't have time to go into all that. But what we call the perichoretic relationship, which literally perichoretic is where we get the word circle. Peri from perimeter, 
circle, choretic, chore, it's where we get the word choreography. So it literally means circle, the dance that goes in a circle, the circle dance. And we've been invited to find our identity inside of the union that has been within the Trinitarian existence since before time began. So our identity is not found in any earthbound reality. We have been set free from gravity. That's what ascension means. We've been set free from those things that hold us to this earth. We have been given a superior reality of a domain. That's what kingdom means. Which is kingdom culture. Kingdom, two things. King's dominion and king's domain. The dominion of the king is the right and the authority and the power to rule. The king's domain is that empire that he exercises, that dominion. Domain, dominion. And it is that dominion, Genesis 1, 26, 1 through 28, that we've been invited or created to dwell in. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them. The whole eternal idea was that you would be the agent. Now think about this. Catch this. That you would actually be the very agent of expression in the entire universe where God's sovereignty is seen and known. Without you expressing it, it is silent. All creation speaks of it, Psalm 19, but it doesn't give voice to it. And it was voice that created the universe. It was voice that said, let there be light. And we're the only ones that God give the right authority and ability to use it. it. God chose you to be his address. Put a little mailbox on top of your head and put the sign Yahweh across it. He chose you to be his address. He chose you to be the transporter of the causality of everything that brought this cosmos into being. Ponder that a moment. Ponder that. The very faith that spoke this into existence, that built this, that very faith, he set down inside of you. Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. And until we begin to understand that union of that in, the inness of God. Believe it or not, that's actually a theological term. Inness, the inness of God. Until we begin to catch a hold and get the revelation of the inness of God. And this can be taught to the littlest among us. Because they already, we already have, is there anybody in here that tell me, <clears throat> be honest, is there anybody in here that doesn't have something in, as a witness screaming on the inside of you right now, telling you, I am? Ask him right now, are you in me? Is there anybody in here that does not, is not having that burn inside of them right now? hearing him say, I am here. I am. 
Because if there's anybody in here that doesn't hear that right now, I want to stop right where we're at and get that fixed. Because what we're talking about right now jumps the chasm of separation. What we're talking about right now repairs the breach, the chasm, the illusion of separation between us and him. I'm here as a voice of intervention. Hebrews chapter seven, verse 25. This is what we do. Hebrews chapter seven, verse 25 says this. He is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him because he ever lives to make intercession. Now we always thought that that word intercession just meant him praying. That's not what that scripture tells us. That's not what that's saying. That scripture's telling us that his life is intercession. He ever lives making intercession. And the intercession that he is making now is the spirit of grace, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I promise I can go read the Bible and it'll say what I'm telling you. The spirit of grace is here to absolutely restructure and redefine your heart so that you understand and you, your eyes ha, are enlightened to know that when he said, I give my peace to you, he was literally telling you, my, the word shalom doesn't just mean a sense of tranquility. The true meaning of that word means wholeness. I give my wholeness to you. I give the absolute sense of me in the fullest sense that I can. This is Jesus talking. In the fullest sense that I have the ability to. As God, I offer to you everything that I am. See, we always thought holiness, we never understood really the holiness of God because we always thought that holiness meant that he was separated, he was other than separated from us. But when the holiness of God and the revelation of the holiness of God is revealed, what he's really saying is this. Picture eternity past. I don't even like to use that word because how can eternity be past? Eternity is always now. Oh, hold on. That gives us a whole different idea, doesn't it? So if eternity is always now and we say that he said this in the past, but if God said it, he's still saying it. Now is still now, right? Am I thinking wrong? If he said it, if he said it, it's still echoing in eternity because he's always he's saying it right now. It doesn't mean that he just said it then, it means he's saying it right now. The holiness of God is displayed in this manner. There was a parable that Jesus spoke, and he said, How can anyone, right? How how would any man deciding to build a house first not count the cost. Right? How would any man build a house if he first didn't count the cost? 
we thought that he was just teaching us a lesson about what we should do. But he's mirroring to us who he is. Because as he is, so are we in this world. He mirrors himself to us and then becomes a mirror of reflection that as we look into his eyes, we see who we are. So the holiness of God is say that Father, Son, and Spirit, right? Here, Tim, you, got, you two guys stand up right here. We're gonna be the Trinity. I get to be the father because I feel like I'm probably the oldest of us. So I'm father, you get to be son, you're Holy Spirit, right? So the father looks at the son and does this, right? Well, the son mirrors the father, so what does he do? Well, the Holy Spirit mirrors the son, so what does he do? So what do I turn around and look at? Right? It's all the same thing. This is what happened when they said this. Check this out. Thank you, guys. Check this out. If we're going to do this, if we're going to do this, then that means that we, as God, bear the responsibility and the burden of sustenance, provision, and companionship. We bear the burden of the house builder. That's literally what the Hebrew word son means, by the way. The word Bain, we say Ben, it's actually pronounced Bain. That's what that word means, the house builder. The house builder. That's what the word son, the son is the builder of the house. If we're gonna do this, if we're gonna build this house, we're counting the cost. And what is the cost? And so what has to be the provision? The cost is eternal, so therefore the provision has to be eternal also. The co- the, do you hear me? The cost is eternal, thereby, therefore the provision, Angela, has to be eternal also. So what do we have that's eternal? Our life. So then what must we offer them? That. The holiness of God is not that God was separated as other than we are. But the holiness of God is figured in this way that God said that everything that we are, everything that we are, we separate that now for them. He's not separated as other from us. God separated himself for us. Game changer. And so he knew then in the cross of redemption what truly happened was that he created a body, a new breed if you will. In the Greek language, that first verse is right there. Petros, Peter, Cephas in the Syriac Aramaic. Petros. Peter was called Peter because God was referred to as the rock. So what he's telling Peter is you're just a little rock cut out of the big rock. You're a chip off the old block, if you will. You're cut from the same stone that's the rock of salvation, Petros. And then he uses the term, 1 Peter chapter one again, apostolos. So in the language, it's actually saying Petros Apostolos, Jesus Christu, Electos. Now that word election right there, 
I've been searching for a long time and I have dug and dug and dug and I found something. That word elect right there, we always had this idea that election meant that there were some that had been predispositioned by God to be holy. And what that created in our minds was this idea that there were some that were created maybe not to be. And so we always wondered. I've, I've actually had counseling sessions with people before, pastoral counseling sessions, counseling sessions, asking me, I'm afraid that I'm not one of the elect. I'm afraid that God didn't choose me. And so no matter what I do, I'm never going to make it. So we want to, what I'm doing by the way today, this is the truest sense of spiritual warfare. You see that lion up there? The lion is roaring today. The lion is roaring. This is the truest sense of spiritual warfare, what we're doing. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds casting aside every imagination and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I love seeing all them kids. Hi, kids. How y'all doing? Awesome. Y'all are beautiful. Casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now there's another one. There's another one that we need to get a hold of. When we say the knowledge of God, right, Haley? Immediately we think of the knowledge that I have of God. Why? Why do we think that? If I said the word of God, whose word is it? Whose? If I said the spirit of God, whose spirit is it? If I said the love of God, whose love is it? So when I say knowledge of God, why do you think it's yours? Why would you think it's yours? What he's trying to do is this is literally the definition of the word metanoia, repentance. He is shifting and changing our, un revealing, unveiling a new thought pattern for us. He's literally taking the, the, the neurotransmitters of our brain and restructuring them. I guarantee you that's happening. It's been proven in scientific circles. I know quantum physicists who are believers that can prove this to you. And neurobiologists, by the way. I know them that can prove that this actually happens. Physiology, it happens in your body. That the neurotransmitters in your mind begin to take shape and they begin to reform themselves. It's the word metanoia. It's why John said and did a repentance, baptism unto repentance. See, Jesus preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But John preached a baptism of repentance, the baptism of repentance. So what the baptism of repentance really means is immersion into the new mind, immersion into the new way of thinking. Immerse yourself into a new mind. Let go of, relinquish all of your subjectivity and immerse yourself in the new mind, the single mind that belongs to him and him alone. Live out of what he knows about you and believe that. Stop trying to live out of your own understanding. The king known as peace, Solomon said it to us this way in Proverbs chapter three, verses three through five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct their path. Notice that he didn't say acknowledge him in all your ways. He said in all your ways, acknowledge him. Because too often we just go do what we want to do then ask the Lord to bless it. 
That's, that's acknowledging him in all our ways. Lord, I sure hope this works out. Well, let me ask you, how's that working out for you? Not very good. I love an honest soul because I've been there. I have screwed up. I have, you guys would not believe some of the, I, I mean, I have done, I, have, I, I, am, I am not a dumb man and I have done some of the dumbest things that you've ever seen in your life. Yep. <laughs> Yipper. But he's given us a gift today. That word right there, electois. Electois, those who are chosen. Do you know what that word really, really means and what's, what struck me so hard? Let's do it like this. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I always ask the Lord to help me to be able to explain things as easy as possible. Let's do it like this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he talks about love, right? It's, we call it the love chapter. But at the very end of it, he says, but let me show you a more excellent way. Yes. Or 1 Corinthians 12, excuse me. Let me show you a more excellent way. I said 13, excuse me. 13 is the love chapter 12. Let me show you a more excellent way. And he begins to teach us about love and what love looks like. Once again, we always read the love chapter, Sydney, and we think God's telling us what to do when he's actually showing us who he is. It's a mirror. It's a mirror. He's saying, I look like this. So in other words, this is what you really look like. Stop thinking you look like this. This is your real face. This is what your real face looks like. This is what your real face looks like. As beautiful as this face is, as amazing as this person is, he holds up the mirror and says, this is still who you are. And I thank God because when I look in the mirror, it's always it's like, oh, good Jesus. It just, it's a testimony to y'all, to the grace that God's put in your heart just to sit here and be able to look at me. That's my wife. She's got googly eyes for me. She thinks I'm cute. That's all that matters. <laughs> Electois. That word carries with it the weight of empowerment. Because what that's actually telling us is that God has offered us a gift called election. He offers it to all humanity through the cross of Jesus Christ. He offers it to all humanity. But there's some, there's some who have, watch this, recognized the value. There are some who have seen the value. That's literally what the word good means in the Hebrew. It simply means that which is valuable and beneficial for the proliferation of life. Give me say that again that which is valuable and beneficial for the proliferation of life, that which will give you abundance every day for the rest of eternity. That's the word good. That's what the word good means. The word evil means that which is injurious and harmful and causes a negation of life. Causes life to cease, doesn't proliferate it. God has nothing but good for you. He wants to proliferate life. But that word electois right there, what it tells us is there are some who have had the ability and the consciousness to recognize the gold when they see it. 
it's kind of like this. You saw the field and you decided to buy it because you knew there was a treasure there. You could see the field and you decided to buy it because there's something there. It's worth everything. You will sell everything you have to get it because you see the value. You see the value. And I declare over you today that you are a people who have enlightened eyes with the ability to recognize the value. That word recognize right there, the word we know of as discern, it literally has a connotation of what, does anybody know what an assay is? An assay is a test that we perform in metallurgy to be able to give credence to the chemical substance of a material. To prove that gold is gold and what the purity of that gold is. To prove that silver is silver and what the purity of that silver is. God is giving you the ability today to recognize, to have a, a mind that can assay this word and respond to it with the same degree of love that he responded to you. First John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. First Peter chapter one says he gives grace and peace without measure. So what he's telling us today is he empowers you with the gift of love because you have responded to him no matter how simple the response was. He saw you, he glanced at you and he saw you go. And that's all he needed. Just that one glance is all that he needed. Because that glance tells him, yes, that one's mine. There's an immediate recognition there. And then he begins to impart. And to me, Sorry, the Lord just spoke to me, healing, and he told me to tell you. He sees the compassion in your heart. He knows how compassionate that you are and the empathy that you have on the inside of you. And he told me to tell you, Isaiah chapter 50, verse four. Write that down, don't ever forget this. Isaiah chapter 50, verse four. And it says this, I will give you the tongue of the learned that you may speak a word of comfort to those who are weary and needy at the right time. He just told me to tell you that. Don't ever forget that, sissy. He's reorienting you today to apprehend your heart to such a degree that you understand that he has empowered, not you, he has empowered you with a gift that is so powerful that he is giving you the ability to respond to him in the same measure that he's responded to you. Because you've chosen the way of excellence. You've chosen to hear his voice. You have chosen to learn the language. You've chosen 
to begin to understand the art of his heartbeat. There's an art to his heartbeat. There's a cadence and a rhythm to life. And he wants to teach you that so that you can redefine everything around you. Because it's not about you anymore. You are simply a transporter of the causality of his faith. That blood that he speaks of in 1 Peter 1 and 2, the sprinkling of the blood, we always had this idea that this was God needing blood to forgive us. But the fact of the matter is, is if you really learn what the word's telling us, the blood of Jesus, this, it, because it's, it's even more powerful than that. Here's how powerful it is. The blood of Jesus is what undid everything that Adam did. The blood was shed because he ripped Adam open and said, no more. I am revealing the true image. This is who you were designed to be. And he ripped off that flesh. Unveiled, the veil was rent. And grace was revealed. The heartbeat of God was set on the stage for all humanity to look at now. So that you may know a love that cannot be known. To know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. How are we going to know something we can't know, Tim? How's that work? There's only one way. And it's knowing it experientially. Not just by mental assent. This today, this is not about information gathering. This is about redefining your heart. Reorienting your life restructuring your very existence and how you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis to live as one who is elect, one who has selected. And I'm finishing up. It's why Peter, the, the epistle, with his given name by Jesus and not Simon Peter, Because what he was saying was this. I am Peter. That was not my birth name. But I've been given a new name. I've been given a new identity. The old has passed away. All has become new. I'm not the man that I was. And the man that I now am is defined by the one who birthed me. The man that I now am is imaged and revealed to me by the one who spoke me into existence. I see the value in that. I am one who has had his heart captured and now in the same measure that my heart has been captured. The Holy Spirit has been blown into me. The wind of God has been blown into me and empowering me to pursue him in the same degree that he pursues me. We even have a picture of this in science that has caused mass destruction. And the picture that causes mass destruction in the natural realm, causes massive life in the spiritual realm, and it's called atomic collision. It's when those two worlds collide. It's the collision of hearts. When they become superimposed on one another. And the heartbeat of God is opened up for all humanity to see. And you are the chosen agent of transportation of that gospel. That's pretty good news. That's pretty good.
you good news. Redefine, reorient, restructure what it means to be as he is. What that means. That means even, Tim, to this degree that when we talk about the Melchizedek priesthood, and we'll go into this another time, but when we talk about the Melchizedek priesthood of Hebrews, right? Once again, we always thought, Jasper, that we were looking at Jesus as the high priest. But Jesus is mirroring to us who we are now. We are Melchizedek in the earth. We are the royal priesthood. We are the chosen generation to reveal the glory of God in the earth. We are a priesthood called royal. Jesus ascended into heaven. Christ never left the planet. Jesus ascended into heaven, but Christ never left the planet. Here he sits among a people who's being awakened out of the dream, who's coming out of the dream state. Arise, O sleeper, Ephesians chapter 4. Awake, and Christ will give thee light. I'm going to finish up right here. I'm going all the way back to the blessing. That blessing is called the Aranach blessing, Aaron. That's the Aranach blessing, right? Now, do you know what Aranor, what we call Aaron? Do you know what his name means? Light bringer. His name means light bringer, Aran Or. The word Or is the same word that is used in his face shine, or panim, face shine, or panim. Or, that means light in Hebrew. Aran Or, the bringer of light. That's what we're doing today. We're bringing light and life. The dark places, the forgotten doors and the lost places in our hearts, Jasper, that maybe we had kind of cordoned off and said, no, Lord, not there. He stands there with us today to pour light into every facet of our being so that there be no, in the same measure, in the same measure that the Father of lights in him is no shadow. Well, if in him, as if, if what Josh told us today is true, that if he's lacking anything, then we are. But if he's not, that changes everything. Pastor Josh taught us that today. Correct? So if that's the case then, and he's the Father of lights, and there is no shadow then he's designed you to not live in any shadows. Come out of the shadows. Come out of that dream state. Come out of the dream. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. And never again, never again, associate yourself. I could take you into the Greek language and show you how about nine different times Jesus said, do it once and get it over with. Be done with it. Never once be done with any idea of any illusion of lack that you might have. Because as he is, so are you. This is what the gospel is all about. And I believe that you are a people that understand. I believe you are the electos. That you are ones who have seen the value in the offering of the blessing that he has knelt before us to present us with. I believe that you are those ones. 
and that you will take that and hold that as dear. That you will apprehend that with your own heart and call that blessed above everything. I declare that over you. I decree that over you in the name of Yeshua. Let there be light. Let there be light. And what he's done for you today is equal to Genesis chapter 1 when he separated the waters from the land and he gave us dry ground in the Hebraic thought process and metaphorical hyperbole, what dry ground represents is a stable footing that is capable of reproduction for life. The dry ground is able to bear vegetation. It's able to produce fruit for the sustenance of life, for the sustenance and continuance of life. Does everybody get that? Does that make sense? He's giving us dry ground to stand on. Let there be light. He's giving you dry ground to stand on. And know that this is firm. You can hold on to this. Apprehend it. Don't ever let it go. Don't ever let it go. Abba, you are... I don't know how to articulate what you are. But you are more than I could ever say. You are more than I can comprehend. But I thank you that you've given us the Hajjas Numa, the Holy Spirit, to be a comforting instructor that seats us in such a measure of peace and wholeness that any idea of brokenness or lack, Lord, simply, as Isaiah chapter 68 says, as wax melts before the fire, so do your enemies. As smoke is blown away by the wind, so is your enemies. Your word has brought healing to us. And I speak wholeness, life, prosperity, and blessing over every house represented here today. And I thank you, Lord, that you have called them to be the electors, the chosen who now choose, the chosen ones who have seen the value in it and have decided to take on your name as their own. We take your name now. We take your identity, Lord. We take your image and likeness as what we have been created for. And we will be a generation called royal that is able to speak into the atmosphere, into the conditions. And that where we set our feet will be called holy. The ground that we stand on will be called holy. And we'll be agents and transporters of your glory, of your grace, and your peace. Agents who beyond any shadow of doubt carry the name and the banner Christ. That is the secret name that was written on the stone. It's secret because it has to be discovered by you. You have to find that name for yourself. Nobody else can reveal. You have to find that name. And when you do, when you do, everything changes. We thank you, Abba, that you have given us your name as a faithful father. And we will not wallow, wallow in the mire, in the muck, of disillusioned, 
disassociated identity. But we sit down today in the covenantal union of Father, Son, and Spirit that you have invited us into that relationship. We give you glory for that, Lord. John 14, 20 says this, and in that day you will know I am in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. And in that day you will know I am in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. In every day, in every moment, Live, live as the tremendous and fascinated explorers of the mercy and grace of God. Be light bringers everywhere you go. That's his plan and design for you. And there's not one of you in this building that has any lack at all. None. Not one of you are separated from his love. Sit down in that today. Ponder these things you've heard today. Meditate these things you've heard today. Amen. Amen. It's good. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Robin Beach. We appreciate you taking us to class. Yeah. You guys bring a Scantron next time. We'll have a test right at the end. Yeah. Uh, No, awesome, awesome. I hope you enjoyed today. As he said right there at the end, ponder, you you might not have catch, you might not have caught everything. But there was something that really just, he said it and it just jived. Ponder, chew on that. Chew on that. And uh, and allow God to to speak to you in that. Um, That's good. Uh, A couple, a couple quick, quick things. Um, infra, all kinds of information, a buffet of information is on the website. You can scan the QR code on the seat in front of you. If you do not see a QR code, stick your hand down in those pockets and fish one out and uh, you will be able to find one in a seat near you. And you can scan that and get all kinds of information. Uh, this, coming, this coming Wednesday night, we are not gonna have, we're no, nothing happening here this coming Wednesday night at Kingdom Culture on Thursday, Lifeway, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, what, what time? Uh, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, Friday night, 7 o'clock, Saturday night, 6 o'clock. 776, got it? There's three services, uh, Jim Lovejoy, Robin Beach, uh, I think Sydney's doing some, some worship as well. Uh, I don't know about on, on which nights all, all of that's happening, but uh, you can, you, we're, we're not going to do Wednesday night here because uh, you're invited there. And not only are you invited there, but it's three services. So we're just not going to be here Wednesday. And if, you, if you're like, well, I need, I need a midweek. Well, you, you've got one in Greenland, Arkansas uh, this week. You've got three of them, okay? Three of them. And uh, Jasper's going to update that on the website for us, right? Do that uh, and put that on there. Can you throw that address on there for Gateway, Jasper? so that they can get that. Go to the website in the next 24 hours. I put the crunch on Jasper. In the next 24 hours, that, that will be posted on there, and you'll be able to see that. Um, so, yeah. So, Jim Lovejoy, who's going to be there, a lot of you guys probably, some of you guys listen to Damon Thompson, I guess, you probably know who Damon is. Well, I do. I know you. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Yeah. lives in Mobile and works with Damon Thompson. But he, he has a church in Ohio. I've actually spoke there at Northgate. And 
Streetsboro, Ohio, and he goes back and forth. But Jim and I have got to be really, he carries a great, he carries a great man. He's an ex-Marine, he's a young guy like Josh, and he's, but he carries a fantastic vision and weight of, of just the love of God, and you will, you will be more than blessed. There needs to be no other advertiser for that. That'll be that'll be good. You're invited to that. We'll have we'll have uh, information for you as far as an address. That's that's only about ten minutes from here uh, or so. And so seven Thursday night, seven o'clock Friday night, six o'clock Saturday night, and you're invited to that. Um, also, as as we've been mentioning, we've got a baptism that's going to be coming up. I do have a date on that. That'll be Wednesday night, the 29th. Wednesday night, the 29th. That's a, that's a week and a half from right now. Wednesday night, the 29th, that'll be in Cave Springs at the BB Pool. And uh, if, if you were there last time, then you know what I'm talking about. We'll get you an address for that. Probably share that one privately and not on the website, the address to, to their house. Um, and we will, we'll, you're invited to that. I believe we have about five right now that, have, that are wanting to be baptized. And there will be food. There will be food and just a, a great time hanging out and baptism. And uh, apparently a pool party as well. So um, afterwards, so uh, it'll it'll be good. You're invited. You're invited to that. Uh, that's on the 29th. So that's that's the that's the following Wednesday night. So no more Wednesday nights this month here at Kingdom Culture. This coming Wednesday night, nothing happening. We're going on thurs, Thursday, Friday, Saturday opportunity over in Greenland, and then the following Wednesday night we'll be in Cave Springs at at the BB House uh, with food and fellowship and uh, baptism. It'll be great. If you need any more information, finally, last last thing right here. I mentioned it last week. Uh, uh, we're we're getting ready to, to to do this, but it looks like that we're going to have enough to have a softball team. So I'm just yeah. yeah. Done. Just be super excited. Um, and uh, so if you're wanting to be a part of that and you haven't told me yet, then uh, come, come, and, come and find me because uh, we're rounding up a roster here. And so if you, if you want to be a part of that, then you need to let me know. I think it is going to happen, but uh, if it doesn't, then we'll also let you know that. But uh, we're, we're going to get that turned in uh, pretty soon if we, if, we do indeed, if we do indeed have enough. So that's all kinds of information. I highlighted several things. Blessings on you guys. We love you.